thing Mattingly does so well in that batter's box, he keeps that front shoulder tucked in there, and that's why he's pigeon toed to remind him to keep it tucked in, not open up so much. And that pitch, even though it was inside, he was able to go inside out with him. Breaking ball, 0 and 1. Winfield hit a half a dozen home runs since the All Star break. He has Mattingly at first and Randolph at second. They play Winfield pretty much like they do Baylor shortstop near third as we look at Winfield who kind of a close stance but he goes right into the ball. Missed inside and the throw is behind Barrett. Randolph is going to third and will hold. So with the second baseman covering Gedman's throw went behind him. He threw it off balance. He didn't really didn't get into it. He took the ball. He thought by surprise he kind of flips it. Now watch him. He doesn't really drive into the throw. See how he's off balance right there? He didn't take that good stride and it just sailed past Barrett for an error. One reason he might have tried it again today, he almost got Mike Pagliarulo on a similar play last night. And he thought he had a clear shot, but he threw a sailor. One and one to count to Winfield with Ken Griffey on deck. A drive into left center field digging his rice and lions. It's up the alley. Two runs will score and the big guy's going for three. He is in there. trouble picking it up but I don't think it would have made any difference because Winfield was going all the way McNamara is coming out to talk to his pitcher then you just have to classify this as a second division inning this is what second division teams do you can't let those nits and nats get on base the Lions and Tigers eat you up which has happened here one ball has really been hit hard and that's the one ball by Winfield but they have three runs you stand around waiting sooner or later a big guy is going to throw the haymaker and that's exactly what happened with two out. You know Pasqua popped up. Pagliarulo hit back to the box breaking his bat and then Meacham walks. Randolph walks. The throwing error after the base hit by Mattingly and the triple. Mike Trujillo throwing down in the bullpen. The batter will be Ken Griffey, who singled a right field in the first inning. Well, Winfield at third in the second. So Toronto is losing one nothing. The Yankees are winning three nothing, and Yankee Stadium is very much alive. Started in breaking ball and missed. And this is the time of the year when everybody plays scoreboard watching. Don't think that they don't. One ball and no strike. Two and zero. Oh. Nipper's at that stage. I think where he's talking to himself a little. He's already walked three and hit a batter, and we're only in the second inning. What do you do if you're the catcher? Is there any possible thing you can do in trying to set a target? All you can do is maybe break his rhythm a little bit and either speed him up, slow him down, do something different, but uh, he's hoping now, hopes he gets it over. Right. Three and one. He made two great pitches to Mattingly. Remember, he hit the outside corner, he came in and hit the inside corner, and the inning has still gotten away from him. He made a good pitch on the base hit he got. He jammed him. Yep. Of course, for Nipper, the worst start he made all year, John McNamara will remember, was the end of April. He allowed six runs in two innings. However, if McNamara wants to go back to that date, it's some comfort to know the Red Sox pulled that game out, 7-6. And here is Don Baylor, first and third. Three in, two out. 
Baylor hit by a pitch in the first inning. Ken Griffey standing at first. Dave Winfield down the line from third. Breaking ball, pop foul. Gedman digging on the screen. nothing in favor of the Yankees here in the second inning. If he feels like a marked man he has reason to feel that way. Good fastball. Oh and two. Trujillo still throwing back a nipper. Baylor trying to unload. He's hit 19. Ball one. Winfield down the line from third. Griffey at first. That's it. However, it's a big three in the second inning for the Yankees. 3 nothing New York at the end of 2 and we'll be right back after these messages from your local station. 3 to nothing Yankees. We go to the 3rd inning. Steve Lyons playing regularly in center field after Tony Armas was hurt. Started in in the beginning of June. One of those four home runs against a left-hand pitcher. It's the first one he hit in his career. Right. That was Mike Jones of Kansas City Wednesday night. He's a very good butter. Pat I was just going to say, is pulled in trying to take the bunt away from him. He's in close. He's in tight. There he goes. And they get him. He is a good enough butter for the Red Sox to keep tabs on him. He has 10 bunt singles this year. If he gets that ball away from home plate, that could be trouble, but he kind of had a little bit of a backspin. Now watch the spin on it as he punts it. it. Didn't really get away from home plate. The spin took it back to Hassey. He bare hands it, and now it's an easy play. Dangerous when you have to bare hand it, but that's all Ron could do. But that backspin took it back to him. So with one away, Marty Barrett coming up, and then Wade Boggs. Ball one. Barrett flied to left field in the first inning. Marty 0 for 1, hitting 279. And those are his numbers. That's been his year. Highlights in June and July. 1 and 0. In there. You got to get tired in August, no matter how strong you are, huh? Playing every day, you yeah. know. The heat sapping. not only a physical thing it's a mental thing you know, if you're in first place uh, you're in pretty good shape because every day every day is New Year's Eve you know the sort in the Dodgers they got to believe if it's not Whitfield it's this guy or that guy it's great going to the ballpark but the dog days are when you're battling are you know you're out of it one and two two and two Ron Guidry trying to win his 16th Billy Martin hoping to keep it going. And that's Phil Necro closest to you, then Lou Pinella, then Billy Martin. Two balls, two strikes to Marty Barrett. Hit down the left field line, hooking foul and out of play. In looking at the crowd, the Yankees have drawn just under a million and a half people. They're averaging almost. 29,000 at home. They had 42,000 here last night. Foul tip and held. With two out, let's check in once again with friend Bill McAtee. Bill? All right, Ben, in Milwaukee, the White Sox are starting to pull away early from the Brewers. In the top of the second, Greg Walker with an RBI double down the left field line. Brian Little scores the fifth Chicago run of the game. 
and the White Sox now lead 6-1 on a bases-loaded walk. And here Wade Boggs takes a strike. Just kind of zero in on his head for this time at bat. Watch where, even when he took that pitch, how he followed it all the way in. He gets that head on top of that ball when it's in the hitting zone. He stays right with it. High slicing foul down the left field line out of play. Even with that swing, you could see that split second. He had that head down there watching it. He's very selective. No balls, two strikes. Bob's lost a hit on a fine play by Pasqua. Slapped it foul. See if we can pick it up. Just watch his head. See him follow that right there. Look at his head. I mean, he is right on, and that was a foul ball. He's very selective. Great discipline in the batter's box. Number one hitter in the league, Wade Boggs. And that's why he just goes the other way. He was hitting 356. He was robbed of a hit in the first inning. And now he singles to left. The oversimplification on Boggs, they say that with two strikes, good hitters will fight off the good pitch. He right is still hand able hand to hand select. Hand He's hand much hand like, uh, I guess you'd say, a, a housewife shopping. I don't like this one. I'll foul it off. I don't like that one. It's a little bit too soft, a little too high, a little too inside until he finally wears the pitcher out to where he gives him the one he wants, and then he punches it to the opposite field. You know, the 0-2 pitch that he fouled off was a pitch most ordinary hitters could not have handled, and he was able to just foul it off and then single. Foul ball down the right field line out of play, 0-1. Now, on the road, he'll hit more ground balls because he'll go to the opposite field in Fenway Park and try to use that wall in left field and hit fly balls. But on the road, he'll try to hit the ground balls. And, of course, he'll have his chicken every day. Can you imagine oh, eating course. chicken every day? No, not every day. There he is. So Boggs at first with two down and Dwight Evans, a clutch hitter at the plate. It's easy to say clutch hitter. So why don't we give you an example? Nine of the first 12 home runs that he hit this year either tied the game or put the Red Sox ahead. <laughs> no window dressing. Nuts and bolts kind of stuff. Red Sox signed him out of high school. Lined into right center and there's nobody there. That's a base hit going to the wall. Boggs is to third, and Rene Latchman will wave him in. The relay by Randolph is a mile high, but backed up by Guidry. And holding at second is Evans. Yankees three, Red Sox one. He could not have thrown the ball any better than he hit it because he really plugged the gap in right center field going all the way, all the way to the wall. He knows it's a base hit, and Boggs running all the way, able to score from first. That's the big RBI. That's the when you can drive that man in from first base. That's the big RBI. Well, now here's Bill Buckner, and of course Buckner has glistening credentials. He was a National League batting champ in 1980. He recently hit the fifth grand slam home run of his career against Joe Beckwith in Kansas City. Strike. Yankees three, Red Sox one. Top of the third inning, two out. Looks like a scramble. Ron Guidry and Al Nipper. RBIs Buckner ever had in a career was 105. The next high 75, and that's where he is right now. So he's really something. See what he just did? Picked up the mask for the catcher. You did that when Mr. Ricky was around. You'd get called the next day and said, "Don't you ever do that again?" Really? Let him pick it up himself. Let him tire himself out. How are you gonna get tired of picking up a mask? I don't know. But that's the way he felt. A little pop foul off third, and that will slice out of play. Baseball players have different yardsticks they use. Like, can he drive in and run from first base like Evans just did? Can a pitcher strike somebody out with less than two outs and a man on third? 
because some of these statistics, and I'm not going to belabor the point, like the game-winning RBI yeah, you and I, I were it. talking about. Hate it. And like there was a statistic in the paper this week, the Astros have a winning record on only two days of the week, 9-7 and seven on Wednesday and 13-6 <laughs> and six on Sunday. Lots it's of luck. Ridiculous. Lots of luck. Buckner's like Mattingly, very tough to strike out. So let's see with two strikes on him. Two and two. Remember, Mattingly had two strikes and fought it off in single. So we'll see what Buckner does. Big deal going on here in New York, and it's nice to have that kind of interest. Who's the better first baseman, Keith Hernandez or Don Mattingly? That's a tough decision, too, brother. Shades the old days. Who's the best center, center fielder, fielder, Mays, right. Mantle, or Snyder? Two and two. Ground ball to the right side. Tricky hop, but Randolph stayed with it. So the Sox get a run, but they lead Evans. And at the end of two and a half, Yankees three. Red Sox one. Who was my partner, and she went out two tournaments later and won. It shows you you can overcome almost any handicap if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> here's, here's Ron Hesse hitting 278. Does she look as much like Jane Fonda as I think she does when oh, you... Oh, she's a beautiful young yeah. lady. And I tell you, just as beautiful inside. Just, just a lovely lady. Off speed, and he was out in front of it. One ball, one strike. The Yankees, three runs, three hits. The Red Sox, one run, four hits, one error. Gutierrez and Boggs on the infield. Rice, Lyons, Evans in the outfield. Rich Gedman behind the plate. Two and one. In there. Al Clark is the plate umpire. Don Denkinger at first. Mike Riley at second. Drew Coble at third. So Hassey now has hit in a modest five straight, and the batter will be Dan Pasquale. In talking to uh, Hassey and talking to some of the Yankees and finally ending up with Billy Martin because they all give Pinella so much praise, I said, what's the difference? And there's a common thread that runs through there, and they all say Pinella, he talks about what the player needs. It's not one particular theory. He'll watch him and say, this is what you should do, and he kind of custom tailors. Are they very big for videotape when you talk to Lou and you, do they have a library and watch or does he just do no. it strictly from the bench? He does it from the bench mostly, mostly from the bench. But Billy says, uh, and very flat today, said, I've never been a big believer in batting coaches. He said, but Pinella's made a believer out of me because he goes to the individual and he says, here, like Weiniger, he said he was hitting off his front foot. He said, you got to lay back a little bit. You have to do this. He customizes everything. One ball and no strikes to count to Dan Pasqua with Mike Pagliarulo on deck. Two and oh the count. Pagliarulo hit back to the box. Remember he cracked his bat in the second inning. speed for a strike two and one Mike Trujillo is up again in the Red Sox bullpen you hear that whistling in our headset mm -hmm. I'm just trying to figure out if that's a player because that's sometimes how you call a sign fouled away I remember years ago when Don Drysdale was on his way to the Hall of Fame he would have a tendency sometimes to drop his arm more than he should and his father would sit in the stands and you'd hear this shrill whistle. Uh -huh. And that was to say, get the arm up. Well, we had signs whistling meant different pitches. High foul. Out of play. Two and two. Isn't that kind of risky? I mean, in a crowd of 40,000, to hear a whistle and think, oh, well, that's curveball. Not really, because uh, if it's a player, you're trained to just tune in on that. 
you just zero in on that, just like in Cubs Park when they had the guy sitting in center field. Bob Buell was sitting in center field with a loud shirt on, mm -hmm. and you say, well, how can you pick him out? Well, if you train yourself, you can pick him out. Down he goes, whistle or no. So Pasqua out on strikes, and Mike Pagliarulo will come up. Strike out number two. You got Baylor to end the second inning, remember? Just a footnote to that. When I was with the Giants, if they called your first name, you were in the batter's box, a particular voice, that meant curveball or whatever uh -huh. you had set up before the game. You say, well, how can you hear that in the crowd? Well, you just trained to hear that. Now, that whistle, hear it? Mm hmm Yeah. Well, I know infielders will holler to one another a first name which will mean fastball or curveball sure, from the right, pitcher. Right. So you might get a jump. Pagliarulo, 0 for 1. It's 3 to 1 Yankees in the third. And John McNamara is striding purposefully from the Red Sox dugout. And he wants to talk to his catcher. Yeah, but he's going to talk loud enough to let out Clark here. John is saying to him, was that ball a strike? I mean, you know, you're getting along with him. But Clark is listening to all this, and you notice he's not talking directly to him. The Red Sox trainer was off the bench as if perhaps it was a physical thing. Just a moment ago, he was up on the steps. Let's see. I uh, see that, Mike, maybe he has a bad back. That he, could be. Yeah, yeah. yeah he might have had yeah. a muscle spasm, and John and the trainer spotted it. And now he's calling the, the bullpen. High slicing fly ball, but because it's slicing, however, Rice can handle it. Bobby Meacham is coming up, and I guess his name will indelibly be inscribed in the Yankee history books, Bobby along with that of Dale Barra. Were you with us that Friday night when this happened? Henderson drilled the ball over the head of Louis Salazar. But look at this. Meacham is leading Barra. Carlton Fisk takes out one, tags the other. One of the memorable plays here at Yankee Stadium. It's not as if you, you're laying bodies at Bobby Meacham's doorstep, but it was one for the books. <laughs> it was a blooper film highlight. Well, Meacham walked in the second inning. That was a cardinal sin committed by Nipper with two out on the bases empty, and it cost him three runs. One and one. He's got to just worry about Meacham, uh, his third baseman. Boggs is in, trying to take the bun away. Buckner's playing off the bag. Hassey's not going anywhere. This is the guy you have to get right here. High foul off third and out of play. That's Mark Clear throwing down in the Red Sox bullpen. Mike Trujillo had been up earlier. And over in the right-hand corner, Bill Fisher. A record of Bill Fisher, and of course, as he sat out there and watched Nipper walk four and hit a batter, Fisher once won 84 and a third innings without allowing a walk in the big leagues. Fly ball to center. Steve Lyons is there. So they leave Hassey, and at the end of three, the Yankees three, the Red Sox one. On NBC Sports World, quite an exciting menu. The NHRA World Finals at drag racing. Top funny car drivers competing with the world championship at speeds of over 200 miles an hour. Nothing funny about that. Plus, the finest physiques in men's bodybuilding display their symmetry and style for the coveted title of Mr. Olympia. Also, Sports World Americana examines the beautiful but dangerous game of polo. Coverage begins at 1.30 Eastern, 3.30 in Los Angeles, NBC Sports World. And there's absolutely nothing to the lie that in Beverly Hills, California, they have Little League Polo. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely not true. Jim <laughs> to my knowledge. <laughs> Little League. Three to one, Yankees in the fourth inning. 
Jim Rice, Tony Armas, and Rich Gedman in that order. And a get well quick to Vice President Kenny Agard of the NBC family, who underwent surgery and is a bit testy about things right now, but he'll be back shortly. That's right. Rice singled in the second inning. He's done very well against Gidry. 353 lifetime. One and one. He is so strong. Oh, that Mr. Rice is so strong. 19 home runs, 72 runs batted in. hit went to right field in the second inning. A combination of the way Gidry's pitching him and of late the Jim Rice stroke. Defensively they're really not playing him to pull. Center fielder Griffey is almost straight away as you can see lined up right with the bag. Uh, you don't really expect him to pull too much if not overshifted. Infield pretty much is straight straight away. Three and one. And he walked him. So Gidry walks his first man in direct contrast to Nipper, who's walked four and hit a batter. And Tony Armas coming up. Designated hitter, Tony Armas. Tony struck out in the second inning, 0 for 1. By the way, Rich Gedman is on deck, so evidently he's okay. Remember when John McNamara went out to talk to him? Here's Gedman. Armas rarely walks. He really is up there to hack. In fact, just to check his numbers this year, how about five walks? <laughs> five walks? That's all. You say, well, how many at bats? Look at that. Well over 240. That's 240 plus a few more. Translates to 2% of the time. If it's in the neighborhood, he's hacking. 0 oh 2. Two years ago, Tony Armas set a record the lowest batting average while driving in 100 runs. Imagine driving in 100 runs, he hit 218. Say, what kind of a year did you have? Oh, so so. Huh. Well, you have to be a pretty good player to be in the lineup hitting 218. Of course, last year he led the American League in home runs and RBIs. But as we mentioned, he's been banged up. He had 103 last year. He has only 48 this year. So it's a one reason, one of many, why the Sox are hurting. And down he goes. Three strikeouts for Ron Guidry. And with one out, Rich Gedman coming up. Rich Gedman. Louisiana Lightning. That's the nickname for Ron Guidry. Carlton Fisk led the Red Sox and then left them as a free agent after the 1980 season. And the next three years, Gedman and Gary Allenson split the job. Last year, Gedman took over. He hit 24 home runs. And Gary Allenson moved on to Toronto. I remember the All-Star game asking Fisk about Gedman. He said when he was a rookie, Gedman was, and Fisk was with the Red Sox, he asked him every question possible about catching. Really a determined young man. Oh, and one. One ball and one strike. He's hitting 312. 11 home runs, 53 runs batted in. And Gedman's busy. He's played in 103 games. On the corner. He is another one of the Red Sox that gives uh, Coach Walt Riniak a lot of credit. And Riniak takes none of it. He says, hey, I can just suggest they have to work. Uh, 
One and two. Jim Rice standing at first with one out. Three to one Yankees in the fourth. High fly ball to straightaway center. Griffey is there. Two down as Rice goes back to first and Jackie Gutierrez coming up. The shortstop, Jackie Gutierrez. Gutierrez hitting 246. He had a very solid year last year. Hit 263, and he's trying to get back up there again. He's a pretty good bunter. So Pagliarulo plays him about even with the bag at third. Ball one. Gutierrez with one home run. You can see where Mike has shortened up at third. Mattingly holding the bag at first on Rice. Full swing and a fly ball to right center. Griffey. So they leave Rice, who open up the inning with a walk. And at the end of three and a half, the Yankees three, the Red Sox one. Sitting quietly in the Yankee dugout, examining his fingertips and his knuckles because he's getting ready for tomorrow. Phil Necro with 295. He's five away. Don Sutton is having a wonderful year. Now needs eight to get the 300. And of course, Tom Seaver got his 300th right here at Yankee Stadium. Bottom of the four, 3 1 Yankees. Willie Randolph, Don Mattingly, and then Dave Winfield. Ball one. You know, it was an interesting shot because most knuckleball pitchers, it is a finger grip that they use, even though they call it knuckleball. Most of them that I knew would never let anybody fool with their fingernails. They, they did it themselves. They had to have it a certain way. Big chopper to third. Short hop nicely by Boggs to get him. One away. Wade Boggs. He short hops this one. Of course, he, you talk so much about his hitting, you don't ever talk about his fielding, but he's a good fielder. Once he's got it, easy play. So one out here in the fourth. Don Mattingly will be the batter. Nice numbers, huh? Oh, man. Strike. Mattingly grounded out and then with two strikes fought off a pitch and single to center to drive in a run. He has hit in 15 straight and leads the American League in RBIs with 96. And he just strokes that into left field. Did you see where that ball was? There's a classic example of a good hitter hitting a good pitch before. Nipper made the pitch. Gedman shifted outside. He wanted the ball low and outside. It was there. Now watch him shift. Look where he is. The catcher is. Now watch the swing. Doesn't try to pull it. Ah, uh, low and outside. He just served it out there. That is just absolutely pure, pure, polyunsaturated hitting. One of the great things about this one game is to look at Mattingly and Boggs. Oh boy. Boggs today is one for two. He has 162 hits and Mattingly now has 150. Now here's Winfield. Strike. Winfield grounded out and then unloaded the triple and that's the difference in the game to drive in two in the second inning. Dave, 80 RBIs. Oh, I love it. Oh, yeah. Man. And they make it look so easy. Oh, easy. Mm. One and one. When Winfield faked the bunt, if he had any idea of bringing Boggs up, forget it. <laughs> Boggs is not going to think with one out that Winfield is bunting, and he'll take his chances and his life in his own hands and stay back there. As far back as he is, Winfield may bunt himself into a double. Winfield has had 450 at-bats this year at least without a sacrifice. Boggs said thank you. Ball two. Al Nipper, who had that wobbly second inning after getting the first two out, settled down in the third, and he's still very much in the game, trailing three to one. Neither Trujillo nor Clear throwing back of him in the bullpen. Oh. 
fouled away. Two and two. John McNamara just trying to ride out the storm. It has been a very disappointing year for the Red Sox. They're in fifth place, 14 games out. They really expected much better things from themselves in spring training. Now back. John is happy. His son, a Marine lieutenant, might very well be in the stands today. John said he should be here. Young Mike. Marine Corps been stationed in Okinawa and just came back. So no matter how bad the ball game goes, he'll have a chance to spend the evening with his son. The Yankees, of course, leading three to one, and that's what they want to know. Kansas City is leading Toronto one nothing in the seventh inning. A combination of a Yankee win and a Toronto defeat. The Yankees would then trail by five. And they haven't been that close since the 25th of July. Be interested to see where this pitch is going because he threw a high fastball and got Baylor. He just threw a high fastball and Winfield has fouled off. And he's had a good breaking ball, so he's got an option. Two and two. You know how my mind works. You started talking about a high fastball, and the first thing I did was look up how many home runs has never allowed. <laughs> what, really? First thing. Well, if he gets it out over that plate, this big guy can do it. Yep. Of course, now he's got a situation here. One out. Do you run your man at first base? Winfield can strike out. I think he'd be running, and you may have him strike him out, throw him out here. Mattingly goes. Fastball is hit into deep left center. Back goes Lions. He will make the play. No, Rice takes it away from him. The Jim Rice makes the play and set a Lions. That's a center fielder's play. Well, there was an almost collision. You would think the center fielder. Now, Rice is kind of waving him off. You can see him, but you can't hear a guy waving. Now, he steps on him right there. Now, Rice said something to Lions uh, after the play was over. They'll be talking about that one. So, with two out, Ken Griffey, who has singled and walked, coming up. Bouncer up the middle. That'll be a base hit, and Lyons was so very deep. Marty Barrett almost got to the ball before Lyons. So first and third with two out, and Don Baylor coming up. Don Baylor. at McNamara Nipper did get a glove on that and it just trickled right off through the center field grass is not exceptionally high very thick and Lions was playing deep and Barrett but got there uh, just a split second before uh, Lions did so here's Baylor hit by a pitch and struck out Oops. all one almost got him again Nipper's not afraid to go inside, and that, that makes a pitcher effective because what he's saying is, hey, I want a piece of that plate, too. You're on top of that plate. You're taking away the outside part. Give me some of it. Two balls and no strikes to count. You know, I've still had the wheels going on that fly ball with Rice and Lyons, and then I realized it. I had to look it up to make sure. You know, Lyons was a minor league all-star third baseman. So what, what is your point? The point being that he's really not a center fielder. Mm -hmm. Two and one. Breaking ball. Oh, a beauty. Two and two. There's Steve Lyons. He had a big year. Pawtucket Red Sox. He's only been playing since 1981. And he's doing a good job. Remember all winter they were talking about Lyons was going to play third and they trade Boggs or something? Got him. So down goes Baylor. The Yankees leave two and it's 3-1 New York. We'll be right back after these messages from your local station. 
Yankee Stadium the site on a beautiful day as we go to the fifth inning with the Yankees three runs six hits and the Red Sox one run four hits and one error. It's Ron Guidry and Al Nipper. The Yankees leading Toronto losing in a tough game one to nothing. Oil can Boyd. What's he reading the rule book? No that's a, that's red a press guide. Press isn't it? guide. Yeah. And it's probably a Yankee press guide. He's got to get more relaxed. He's all <laughs> too tight on that bench. Yeah, it is. Yankee How nervous press guy. he looks. Oil oil can. Tight. Dennis Ray Oil Can Boyd out of Meridian, Mississippi. Steve Lyons at the plate. Then Marty Barrett and Wade Boggs. Strike. They're looking bunt. Lyons, remember, tried to bunt his way aboard in the third inning. He's got 10 bunt singles this year. Two. So Pagliarulo now backs off the grass. That Gidry really comes at you as we look at Pagliarulo back in his normal position. Half swing, check a third, no swing, says Drew Coble. One ball, two strikes. We're talking about some of the shortcomings of the Red Sox as you take a look at that half swing. No speed and eighth in home runs. And down goes Lyon. Strikeout number four for Ron Guidry. Walk one and he's allowed four hits and one run. Marty Barrett flied to left and struck out. He's 0 for 2. The Red Sox and of course their ballpark isn't built for a running game anyway but still it's kind of a shock to realize that the Red Sox have been last in stolen bases three of the last four years. Pasqua can't get it and it's going to go to the wall. So Marty Barrett legs it into second and he will hold there. So that means Wade Boggs coming up with Dwight Evans back of him and this game very much up in the air. Three one Yankees in the fifth. You can talk about his hitting his numbers really tell the whole story but from yeah but you see he's off to a slow start in April he only, <laughs> he only hit 301 he's just got what they call a good balanced workable stance discipline in the strike zone and stays on top of the ball He's always been a good hitter. You, I read stories about him where his dad would take cork and wrap it with tape and throw it in, and he'd use a broomstick and a wiffle ball. And the art of science book by Ted Williams got to know it well. Right, one and one. His big hero and evidently close friend too is George Brett. I think one has stayed at the other's home upon occasion. Calls him idle. One and one. A drive to right, but Winfield should gather it in. So that's the first time that Boggs has pulled the ball after going the other way twice. And with two down, a runner at second, Dwight Evans coming up as singled and doubled. Don't forget that number about Evans. Nine of his first 12 home runs either tied or put the Sox in front, and he hits Gidry very well. I've always felt this fellow is one of the best kept secrets in baseball. Good ball player. Good ball player. Two out. Three to one Yankees in the fourth. last year had a big year but now look what's happened to him last year he drove in hundred and four and scored a league leading hundred and twenty one now back boy it's tough you have a big year and yeah it's like what have you done for me lately you've done for me lately is right and McNamara hoping 
he will do something for him not lately but right now it's three to one Yankees fifth inning two out Billy Martin saved let him get well later next week Billy knows that Kansas City is leading Toronto one nothing in the seventh that was the last we heard and then Toronto has turned it around now to lead two to one. Toronto scored two in the bottom of the seventh inning to turn that game around. There you go. Yankees three, Red Sox one. We have two out top of the fifth inning. Evans representing the tying run. Bill Buckner on deck. Marty Barrett away from second base. times in the second inning Meacham walked and a single by Mattingly got him home and Winfield tripled home Randolph and Mattingly the Red Sox had a single by Boggs and a double by Evans to get him home line foul right over the tarp roller he made a great catch in the stands had a glove and he just reached over and made the grab that's him right there and a boy kid. Nice play, nice play. Hurt his hand, but it's not going to hurt too much. He got himself a big league ball. You think the kids on the block are going to hear about that? Oh, man, he's going to, he's hoping that mom is taping the game. <laughs> two and two. Two agents talking to him right now. Ground ball down to short. Big hop, almost hit Meacham in the stomach. And his throw pulled Mattingly off the bag. I think that bad hop at the last minute seemed to throw Meacham out of rhythm. No question about it. He was ready to make the routine play, and then it takes the big hop, gets him in the, almost in the chest. He's got time, but sidearms a sailor, and Mattingly just cannot stay on the bag. So run is at first and third with two out, and Bill Buckner, the batter, they are going to give Meacham an error. That's a tough call. He had time, I think. Maybe that's why. Yeah, he had time. Buckner hit into a force play, grounded out 0 for 2. He has a little four-game hitting streak. Hit foul off third, down the line, out of play. It seems like a thousand years ago, but I vividly remember when Bill Buckner was just a kid with the Los Angeles Dodgers and in an exhibition game after the game Ted Williams said I know one thing about that boy someday he's going to lead the league. Mm. I mean how about being a judge of talent and later in 1980 Buckner led the National League in hitting he had 324 with the Chicago Cubs. One and one. He's had seven seasons where he's hit over 300, and right now he has Evans at first and Barrett at third. Jim Murray said he could foul off machine gun bullets. <laughs> <laughs> one ball, one strike. High pop fly, and fighting the sun is Meacham. And the Sox leave two out on the line. No runs, a hit, an error, and at the end of four and a half, Yankees three, Red Sox one. Bottom of the fifth inning with the Yankees leading the Red Sox three to one. Little happy note in the NBC Sports family, our heartiest congratulations to our director, John Filippelli, and his lovely wife, Jenna, celebrating their fourth anniversary. John producing our telecast today. Four years, he's still taking rice out of his suit. That's right. His wife is still meeting the planes. <laughs> Get some time in the league. <laughs> Ron Assey. Fly ball down the right field line, hooking foul and out of play. 
That's one of those swings you take, Vin, and I've had many of them, so I know what's going through Hassie's mind. Oh, am I glad I hit that, and it hit me right in the navel. He yeah. had one of those self-defense jobs that it, time. It was almost that little swing that Mattingly had that wound up hitting the foul pole for a home run last time. We well, were that's here. why Mattingly's hitting 300. <laughs> but, oh, that was one of those self-defenses. It was a curveball right in on the belt buckle. Ron's hitting 282. Slow jug is in there. Strike two. Al Nipper kind of bobbing and weaving, and suddenly he's in the fifth inning, and it's still three to one New York. Breaking ball. So regardless of what goes from here, you, you have to kind of take your hat off to Nipper because he had one of those innings that was just bad pitching when he walked the ninth in the first place hitter, and it could have really upset him to the point that it would have, uh, for crying out loud, what am I doing, ba 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 ba. But he just settled down, and he's kept his ball club in it. Here's a strike two pitch on the way. Right on the thumbs, a little roller to second. Marty Barrett gets him. And with that, time for another update. So let's go across the river, fight the traffic, and see Bill McAtee. All right, Vin, you mentioned that game in Toronto as the Blue Jays have taken the lead on the Royals in the seventh. Jeff Burroughs with a shot to left that bounces over the head of Lonnie Smith. Lloyd Mosby scores. Burroughs ends up at third. They give him a triple. George Bell followed with an RBI single. It's 2-1. Okay, Bill, we'll keep an eye on that one in particular today. Big slow jug to Pasqua for a strike. Go on one. If you're not keeping score and you wonder about the Red Sox in the sixth inning, Jim Rice, Tony Armas, and Rich Gedman. Line drive, base hit into right center field of Pasqua. He's one for three, and Lyons does a good job of cutting it off and getting it back into Barrett. He did do a good job cutting that ball off and getting it back in to keep that double play in order. And that's what a good ball club always does. Keep the double play in order on defense and stay away from it when you're on offense. So with one out and a runner at first, the Yankees leading 3-1. to one. Mike Pagliarulo hit back to the box and fly to left. What do you call that, a Tarantella, that uh, Italian dance? Yes, yeah. national anthem. <laughs> this is Italian American Day here at Yankee Stadium. Breaking ball, ball one, one and all. And the colors. All the Italian American Yankees: Rizzuto, Crescetti, DiMaggio, Lazari, Lazari, Yogi. Chopper now to Buckner. He goes to his shortstop, back to Buckner, and you can thank center fielder Steve Lyons. The center fielder cut it off for a single, and they got the double play. And at the end of five, 3-1 New York. Footwork presents Baseball Remembers. Brought to you by new Footwork Athlete's Foot Remedy. Your ultimate weapon to cure and protect against athlete's foot. Willie McCovey remembers when the 1962 World Series came down to his last at bat. The first pitch he threw to me, I hit it long and foul over the right field fence. I got way out front of it. Then the very second pitch, I had a line drive that I thought and everybody else thought was a base hit that was going to win the series. But <laughs> I didn't know Richardson was standing there. I found out later that he wouldn't have been playing me over there, but apparently he went over there to kind of smooth off the infield a little bit. And before he could get back around to where he would have pitched me. I guess Terry was already in the process of making his pitch. It was just one of those things. I hit the ball as well as I could, and it just happened to be right at it. You know, on a double play, the infielder and the middleman has a way of using the bag as a defensive mechanism. He can either cut across it or tag it. Watch on this particular play what Gutierrez does. Now, the base runner is going to have to try to figure out, is he coming across or stopping? Look at this. He tags with the left foot and then cuts loose. Pasqua almost gets him, but it's one of those little things as you're running, what's he going to do? Use the bag or cut across? That was a good play. And one of the first things they teach anybody playing around second base, don't ever be caught with both feet on the ground. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Otherwise, you'll be about maybe 20 minutes late for the dance. 
Well, Jim Rice, followed by Tony Armas, and then Rich Gedman. Sixth inning, three to one Yankees. Fouled away. For some reason, Rice has gone to a different bat. He had a black beauty up there the first time. This is just a looks like a burnt Louisville slugger. Line drive foul in the count 0 and 2. Ron Guidry is a very slight man. We were talking before about the great build of Jim Rice. Guidry's the other way around. He's 5'11 and when he gets really puffed up he's about 155. Line drive right at third and Pagliarulo puts it away. One away. The designated hitter Tony Armas. Tony Armas has struck out twice as the designated hitter. In the second and in the fourth. Comebacker. Oh, what a play by Gidry. Ball was well hit, but the ability of following through and being in position to field a comebacker is what made that play. He was ready for it. You know, here in Yankee Stadium, they have that Mitsubishi Diamond Vision. They have them in Dodger Stadium. We've seen them in a lot of places. The other night at Dodger Stadium, they put together about a minute, a minute and a half highlight film of only comebackers. Oh, the oil, it was the most awesome, terrifying thing you ever saw. Line drives, hitting pitches on the arm, hips, just missing them. What a frightful position that can be. Well, don't forget, you're 60 feet, 6 inches to start out, yeah. but you're closer, obviously, when you throw it. 2-0 the count. Excellent play by Guidry. Gedman has grounded to short and flied to center. 0 for 2. 3-1 Yankees. Top of the sixth. And that's stroked into right center. Base hit. So all three balls now have been hit right on the button. The line drive at third, the one hop comebacker, and now the single. So immediately you look at Gidry and you find out, well, he's completed nine of 23, though he has gone the distance plenty of times. Gutierrez robbed of a hit on an excellent play by Pagliarulo. That prevented a run in the second inning. And then he flied out last time. He could easily be one for two with a run batted in. And he lines it into left center. Base hit. Over to cut it off is Griffey. However, Gedman on his way to third, which allows the tying run to go to second. Not too swift to play. Well, they were trying to hit the cutoff man, Bobby Meacham, but the play was to go into second base to keep uh, Gutierrez. I have to pause to pronounce that name. Uh, to keep him at first base. The ball is well hit. Now, Gedman's not going to score on this. He doesn't have that kind of speed. So every ball in the inning has been hit. It's going to be ruled a double. But you start to wonder now if the needle is almost gone empty in Gidry's tank. Let's see. Strike to Lyon. Hey, double, but if he goes into second base with that throw, I got to wonder. You mean if he goes in the second, they might might send Gedman home? No, no. I mean, make a, keep him there. But when he, he came up throwing the third, and Gutierrez never hesitated. Line drive, and there's a saver by Mattingly. And I'll tell you one thing, Ron Guidry is a very lucky pitcher as he goes to the Yankee dugout because this play means two runs and would otherwise mean the game is even. Instead, it's still 3-1 Yankees. Mattingly makes a great play as Vin said save two runs but you don't think that Lyons was a little bit upset watch the reaction oh he caught it or needed to face it in the runs and uh and we forge along into the six three to one Yankees of course it is no surprise to see Mattingly make a great play remember he won 153 games without an error uh, he is something over there fouled away but boy, the Red Sox really hitting tough luck in the top of the sixth. Rice a bullet at third. 
Armis a one hopper and a great leaping grab by Ron Guidry. Then Gedman singles, Gutierrez doubles, and Lyons loses an extra base hit and two RBIs. High foul off third out of play. And look at there. Kansas City has turned it around on Toronto 4-2. I don't believe they've posted. Yes, they're just putting it in the scoreboard here. And you can hear the crowd reacting. They have just put it up this second. Meacham walked and scored a run, fly to center, and Billy Martin knows he could conceivably be five back by bedtime. Fouled off. And to repeat, the last time the Yankees were five back was July 25th. The Yankees actually were tied in the loss column with Toronto and then took gas and turned around and lost 10 out of 14. message right there saying okay come on now don't be crowding me you gotta like the way this guy's hung in there I'll tell you Nipper is really battled he had that one bad inning yeah that inning was enough to break the spirit of a lot of people but he hung tough giving up three runs in the second inning ground foul so Meacham back to the plate Al Nipper was born in San Diego. He's just 26 years old. You better tell where he lives now. I'll be in trouble. Where does he live now? Hazelwood, Missouri, right outside St. Louis. The Show Me State. <laughs> Ground ball hard to Buckner. Billy Bucks does it himself. One away. You know, it's kind of, it was funny when you, you announced the score and it was just perfect timing and the fans reacted and the ball players do look at it. Willie Randolph. We had a rule one time on the Cardinal Club. You weren't supposed to look at the scoreboard or talk about it. Pitchers would call you out on the mound and say tell me what the score is of the Dodgers <laughs> or whatever the club was leading you. You know because you didn't want the manager here but everybody's watching it from now on in. You can oh, bet on hell. that. And how. Well here's Willie Randolph. Walk twice grounded to third 0 for 1. Remember we mentioned that note way back at the start of the game too about the Yankees and Toronto. They have seven games left including the last three games of the baseball year October four five and six. You know I've been watching Lions in center field. He's really not sure where to play. He's been asking uh, his right fielder Evans and he's looking over at Rice. Now he's moving down towards the straightaway position. Fastball, a comebacker to Nipper. So two down in the sixth inning. When the Red Sox come up in the seventh inning, and we will surely find out whether Ron Guidry is tiring, Barrett, Boggs, and Evans will be due up. And here is Manningly, who saved Guidry's bacon with that leaping catch in the sixth. He is two for three driven in a run scored one otherwise hasn't done a thing all day what a player ball one Mattingly 96 runs batted in to lead the American League high fly ball to left field Rice is there and at the end of six, the Yankees go quietly. The Yankees three, the Red Sox one, and we'll be right back after these messages from your local station, and you may dance a while if you wish. <laughs> Friends, once again, we'd like to remind our viewers we'll be selecting the NBC Light Beer from Miller Player of the Game at the conclusion of this ball game, and it's a good one. Three to one Yankees, and we move to the seven. Ron Guidry, who might be coming to the end after that very rocky sixth inning so they're backing them up with Brian Fisher and Bob Shirley in the bullpen we'll see Marty Barrett Wade Boggs and Dwight Emmons gonna find out 
Barrett flied to left, struck out, and doubled. Marty hitting 280. 2 0. Gidry has walked just one. He has struck out four. And he's allowed seven hits and only one run. Thanks to Mattingly. Ground ball. Foul ball. Barrett. Have to get another bat. He cracked it. I think. Nope. Two and two. Kind of a funny swing he took, though. Yeah. Uh, he had him two balls in one strike, yet he kind of reached out like he was fighting off a tough pitch. Usually see that when the fellow's got two strikes on him. Mm -hmm. Barrett has struck out less than 10% of the time. He's a pretty good contact hitter. Two and two. Pull the other way. Talking about him not striking out last year, he was the toughest man in the league to strike out. There's Fisher and Shirley. We told you they were up. Ground ball down to shortstop. Juggle. And now Bobs and Evans coming up with a runner at first. The second era charge to Bobby Meacham. I think you can put that in the category of he let the ball play him. He kind of waited on it. He seemed to charge it and then kind of stop. And it turns out to be a, an error. And now you got that time run at the plate. And of course, that's the last thing Gidry needed. He was bailed out by a great defensive play. Now, when he needs some support, he has to pitch tough. Wade Boggs, Dwight Evans, and Bill Buckner. Boggs. A sinking line drive to left. Pasqua made a fine catch. Single then and flied to right. Right. Boggs began the day at 357, leading the league, and that's exactly where he is. And look at that. Mm. Even better than that if you want to take the whole year. Big chopper down to Randolph, to Meacham, to first safe. It was going to be a tough double play, but Boggs was really hustling down the line. The ball is handled cleanly all the way around, and Meacham gets something on his throw. They don't lay a hand on him. Look at Randolph. He had to get down because he was right in the line of fire. Right Mattingly showing that he has the ball in the glove, but Boggs beats it out and keeps the inning alive because no doubt about it, the double play, that's the inning record. So very much alive as Boggs is at first. The potential tying run still at the plate, and it's Dwight Evans who singled and doubled and was aboard on the air by Meacham. He's two for three. Right. You know, it's amazing that Wade Boggs at first, he has played in 113 games. He has failed to reach only five games. Mm. He's always on base. On one to Dwight Evans. Three to one Yankees, top of the seventh. Good save by Ron Hesse. And you kept reading all spring about the possibility of him being traded, and Billy Martin's coming out to talk to his pitcher now. He might have felt he was forcing himself on that pitch. He almost threw it away. Seems to be all right. But when Billy usually comes out, he, he makes the change. Watch this pitch. It's a good save by Ron Hassey. Curveball. Gidry has completed nine games this year. You have Fisher and Shirley back of him. You have a left-hand hitter on deck, Bill Buckner. So they stay with Gidry. 
many times when the manager goes out there in a spot like that, it's uh, the way a pitcher answers the question more than the answer that determines whether he stays or goes. And obviously, uh, Billy heard what he liked and Gidry stays. That distinguished gentleman in the dugout, Bill Monbouquet, who just celebrated his 48th birthday. He's the new Yankee pitching coach. One and one now, the count to Dwight Evans. High fly ball into right field. Winfield going back on the track. Makes the catch. So Evans deep to right, but not deep enough for the Red Sox. And with two out, Boggs at first. Bill Buckner the batter. Buck hit into a force play, grounded to second, and popped to short. 13 home runs, 75 runs batted in. As you can see, he's got a lot of stamina and nine complete. Line drive to center field, base hit. Boggs to second and holding. And now here comes Jim Rice and here comes Billy Martin and there goes Ron Guidry. The last two innings and bits and balls really hit. Got out of it with his scalp in the sixth and here that last ball was tattooed. So Brian Fisher who has been down on the bullpen will be called in to get Jim Rice. So Ron Guidry goes six and two thirds. He can win it or have nothing to do with it. He made exactly 100 pitches and out he goes. So it's 3-1 Yankees but it's still very much up in the air. Don't go wandering off. We'll be right back. Stage very much set here at Yankee Stadium. The added drama, the fact that Kansas City is leading Toronto 4-2 to two in the ninth inning. And here in Yankee Stadium, the Yankees leading 3-1. They have led that way since the third inning. But the Red Sox keep nibbling. And they have the tying runs aboard with two out. Brian Fisher has been called in to pitch against Jim Rice. They were motoring Brian Fisher in from the bullpen. And it reminded me of something I was told about the other day. I won't mention any names because I don't want to embarrass the guy but a former pitching coach in the big leagues told me about a pitcher who was still pitching in the big leagues who was brought in by a motor car to relieve in his first game and threw up in the car <laughs> he was he was so nervous he threw up in the car as they motored him in from the bullpen oh. but I don't want to say who it is <laughs> well here's Jim Rice single walk and lined out late on that fastball. Oh, what a contrast. Fisher with a good fastball just reared back and fired that ball. One ball and one strike. Rice with Tony Armas to follow. The era, of course, began the inning just as a brilliant defensive play by Mattingly bailed out Gidry in the sixth. at second Buckner at first Fisher off the rubber so the tying runs are aboard the Sox have been hanging on the line in the sixth inning and now again in the seventh young Brian Fisher Came here in the Rick Sarone deal with Atlanta. A big challenge in a big moment. And two more socks flap in the breeze, and it's 3 1 Yankees. Here's another edition of the seventh inning stretch. There's all can Boyd. He's 
studiously trying to memorize that that Yankee press guide. I wonder if he knows they're going to make that into a movie. <laughs> well, whatever he does, I hope he doesn't tell me how it comes out. <laughs> The Boston Red Sox thoroughly frustrated have left nine men on in seven innings and the Yankees continue to hold on to a three to one lead. One ball and no strikes. Winfield grounded to short and then had the big hit he tripled home to in the second inning last time up fly to left. is up again behind Nipper. Trujillo had thrown early. Right. Al Nipper has completed three games this year. There's a great deal of hesitancy I'm sure on John McNamara's part to go to his pen anyway. That's what they're booing a beach ball and the youngster had to go out and get it. John McNamara saying earlier I can't remember a one two three eighth or ninth inning for my reliever. Two balls one strike. Line foul. Two and two. Winfield 18 home runs 80 runs batted in picking up the two today. Well uh, welcome to all you folks who are watching the Kansas City Toronto ball game added interest here with the Yankees hanging on because the Red Sox consistently challenging and for one reason or another unable to get the runs home. They've left nine in seven innings. The Yankees still leading. Line in the left field sinking but Rice is there. Boy you could see a lot of baseball too all the way in that glove. Yes you could. He wasn't sure of it. Not only was it sinking he was fighting that son and you can just see him battle it all the way. He's not sure of it even after it's in his glove. Very tentative. You can see him look away and like an ice cream cone and he says oh boy am I glad this baby's over. One down this telecast presented by authority of Major League Baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without the express written consent of Major League Baseball. High fly ball into center. Steve Lyons is there. Two down in the seventh inning. So Kansas City knocked off Toronto four to two. The Yankees are trying to hold on to a three to one lead. That would then cut Toronto's lead to five, which is where they were back on July 25th. For the Yankees, they play the Red Sox tomorrow and again on Monday. A very brief four game homestand. Would you believe Baylor's hit again? And it was an off-speed pitch. And you see, he said he didn't even make a move. No. In other words, he didn't make any effort to get out of the way of the pitch. It was a slow curveball, and he didn't even budge. He just took the pitch. And now Baylor wants to know what he's arguing about. And he's come back to get into it and give his two cents worth. He was definitely not thrown at him. That is not even the point. It's just a case of... He didn't make a move to get out of the way and it's a base runner. That's the 19th time this year that Don Baylor has been hit by a pitch. And a plate umpire of course has to make the decision if the hitter does not make an effort to get out of the way then he does not award him first. You know I saw that called when Don Drysdale was having his streak. Right. But 
this particular time, it's a slow curveball. I don't think he could have wiped it out of the way. It's almost right in the middle of his back. Look at here. Might as well let it hit you. If you're going to get hit, that's the pitch you want to get hit with. I don't so Baylor, Taylor. hit by the pitch, and with two out, the batter is Ron Hasse. Uh -huh. When Dick Dietz came up, Harry Wendelstead of the National League was the umpire. The bases were loaded, and Dietz was hit, and Wendelstead refused to allow it. And the Giants did not score, and Drysdale went on with his scoreless string. That's the toughest call I think I've ever seen an uh -huh. umpire make. So here is Hassey singled and grounded out. Baylor is so big. I mean, uh, the last time he didn't even rub it was a fastball. A slow curveball was nothing like Bobby Valentine said. He said, uh, Baylor, why should he make an effort? It'd be like a car swerving to avoid a squirrel. Look at him. He's built like an oak tree. First thing they do when it hit him was examine the ball. 0 and 1. One ball and one strike to Hassey. Two out in the seventh. Three to one Yankees. In the eighth inning, the Red Sox will have Tony Armas, Rich Gedman, and Jackie Gutierrez. Popped up. It'll be Billy Buckner. So they leave Baylor hit by the pitch. And at the end of seven, the Yankees three, the Red Sox one. Now, as I understand it, Bobby, in baseball, you keep your players in a bullpen, choke your bats, and steal bases? That's right, Freddie, and just about everybody drinks light beer for Miller. Oh, this is the one that's less filling. Right again, and that's important to an old base stealer like me, and it tastes great. Certainly does. Now, about these bases, mate, how many did you steal? 681. Wow. 681? Blimey, where do you keep them all? <laughs> light beer from Miller, everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. Don't forget, next, the $200,000 Nestle's World Championship of Women's Golf from Buford, Georgia. The entry list including defending champion Nancy Lopez, four-time champion Alice Miller, U.S. Women's Open champion Kathy Baker. The world's top women golfers will be competing for the title and the $65,000 first prize. All coming up next, right here on NBC Sports. The paid attendance today, 40,179, 40,179, about 12,000 above the Yankee average. And with 40,000, it means they will go over the million and a half mark tomorrow. Tony Armas struck out twice in the second and fourth. Hit a one hopper and a great leaping catch by Gidry to throw him out in the sixth inning. So Tony 0 for 3. 16 home runs, 36 RBI. Boy, I tell you, that Brian Fish is throwing BBs. Oh, he's got a good live arm. Two high fastballs, threw it right by him. Threw a curveball right now. You wonder what Armas would do. He can just keep climbing that ladder if he chooses to. He doesn't have to come in that strike zone. 0 oh and 2. He went up the ladder, one and two the count. Armas, Gedman, Gutierrez, and then Lyons. If you're wondering about whether McNamara would go to the bench, he has one left-hand hitter, Mike Eastler. Third time, Tony Armas has struck out. Throwing nothing but fastballs, and the way he's throwing it, you can break in the glove with two batters. I mean, he is rearing back and pumping. Look at here. Right down the middle, something on it. Rich Gedman has grounded a short, fly to center, and single to center. Everything a strike. 0 and 1. Three to one Yankees. Been that way since the third inning. One ball, one strike. He's around that plate, isn't he? Ball two. 
two and one. Brian Fisher four and three and five saves. Become a very important part of the Yankee bullpen. High fly ball to center. Ken Griffey says he has it. Two down in the eighth inning, and Jackie Gutierrez coming up. Stop. Jackie Gutierrez. Gutierrez robbed of a hit in the second inning on a diving catch by Pagliarulo, fly to center, and then doubled in the sixth inning. And when you realize it, there have been three very big Yankee defensive plays. Pagliarulo on Gutierrez in the second inning. Gidry on Armist Ball in the sixth, and then Mattingly's leaping catch of the drive by Lyons. Fisher's yet to throw a breaking ball. 0 and 1 to the Red Sox shortstop. Fastball lifted to right center. Griffey and Winfield, it's Griffey. And the Red Sox are running out of time as they go out in order one, two, three. And at the end of seven and a half, the Yankees three, the Red Sox one. An American tradition continues. They are destined to be immortalized in Cooperstown. Reggie Jackson for his power and drama. Rod Carew for his sweet stroke. Next Saturday, these veterans lead the Angels' quest for their first pennant as California hosts Detroit or the Twins meet the Red Sox. The tradition is here. The memories are waiting. Bottom of the eighth inning, Dan Pasqua, Mike Pagliarulo, and Bobby Meacham in the bottom of the eighth, three to one Yankees. And then the Dodgers are up one to nothing in the third inning against the Giants. Honeycutt against Hamaker and those Dodgers running away with that National League West. It's hard to believe they are enjoying the largest lead of any first place team in the big league. And talking about lead, the Yankees trying to win today and cut Toronto's lead to five. Pasqua has popped up, struck out, and singled. Al Nipper, who did not look like he was going to get out of the second inning, is still out there battling here in the bottom of the eighth. Fouled away. And I'd have to say the big difference is he's been able to get his slow curveball and the off-speed pitch. He's been able to get that over for a strike, and he's been ahead of the hitters with that and it's helped set up his fastball and he's not been the luckiest guy he lost his last outing pitching a complete game Texas beat him 3 2 when Nipper wild pitched a run in with two out in the eighth inning of that game and any one of three balls hit today that were caught if anyone gets through he's at least tied two and two. Just missed with the breaking ball. Nipper thought he had it. He kind of let out a yeah. John McNamara will send up Steve Lyons, Marty Barrett, and Wade Boggs in the ninth inning. And remember, he has Eastler on the bench. A drive into right center. Lyons on the move. Base hit and goes to the wall. He's going to be waved, but he's holding. Gene Michael gave him one wave and then stopped him. I'm not so sure Lyons saw that ball because it looked like he was laying back. He may have lost it in the sun because he did not get a good jump on it. Should have been caught. He's not sure of it. And there you can see him. He's going to play it on the one hop. He does not get a good jump on it. In addition to that, it gets by him. And that's when Michael waved Pasqua on, but he didn't see the sign and stops at second base. So Pasqua at second with nobody out. Mike Pagliarulo, Bobby Meacham, and Willie Randolph now trying to pick him up. Here's that spot again where you've got to get the ground ball. If you're going to make the out, you've got to pick up the base. Well, he said back to the box, grounded into a double play, and flied out. Mike Pagliarulo is the only Yankee today who has failed to reach first base, either on a base hit or a walk. Pagliarulo hitting 237. That got him on the ankle a little bit. Mm -hmm. You could see him really try to pull the ball. He was he wants to get it to that right side. Fly ball is not going to do you any good here. Here's another look at it. See where it gets him. 
back off the right ankle. Yeah. Pasquas double here in the eighth inning is the first Yankee hit since Pasquas singled in the fifth inning. So Nipper's been tough outside of that one wobbly second inning when the Yankees scored three times. Oh and two to Mike Pagliarulo. Pickoff play. are trying to beat the Red Sox six straight times. They're trying to win their fifth consecutive home game. They have a great home record. They're 38 and 15 at home. They're really tough here. One and two. Second base, Dan Pasqua. Bottom of the eighth, 3 1 Yankees. The Yankees in the second inning with two out. Meacham walk, Randolph walk, Mattingly singled home Meacham, Winfield tripled home Randolph and Mattingly. The Red Sox scored in the third, Boggs singled, and Evans doubled him in. Since then, the Red Sox have been leaving people, and the Yankees haven't been able to get anybody on at all. And it's still 3 1. 2 and 2. Nipper has now thrown 137 pitches, and Mark Clear is down in the bullpen. because now the base on balls here on this pitch really changes the whole strategy because Meacham goes for the punt. You got second and third top of your lineup up. He's this is the big pitch right here. He missed with the 2-2. Two -two. Little number foul. Three and two to Mike Pagliarulo. Nobody out in the eighth. Pasquat second. To see what the Nipper's thinking. I can't let him pull the ball. I got to get on the outside corner. Got to get him to pop it up. A lot of little battles going on here. Pasqua knows what's happening. And he walked him, and that wrecks the inning for Nipper. Now the batter for the Yankees leads the club in sacrifices. Bobby Meacham has 13. Nobody else has more than four. The first thing that McNamara does is tell his men to go to the mound. He's going to buy some time is what he's going to do. And he may be setting up a play. And Pasco at second base, Gedman likes to throw. We saw that where he threw one, threw it into the center field. But he doesn't mind throwing. The pickoff plays what the Yankees want to stay away from. Time is being called now as Michael at third base for one reason calling time. Now we're all set. So Pasqua at second, Pagliarulo at first, nobody out. Everybody in the house looking bunt. Meacham has walked, fly to center, grounded out. The shortstop is usually the key in this kind of a spot to see what he's going to do, and he's going to cover. And there's the bunt. It's a beauty. So the Red Sox had their third baseman coming to the plate, hoping to get a force, and they couldn't do it on a perfect bunt by Bobby Meacham. Just beautiful. He deadens the ball and he gets it onto the grass, and that was the key. Never did hit the dirt. You see it land on the grass, and all Buckner could do would be go to first base, and it was a pretty close play at that. Now McNamara is coming out, and that base on balls again. It's it's this is the kind of a game the Nipper's going to be thinking about tonight for a 
more than once. He has the perfect name for what's happened to him today because it's been the people like Meacham who have really hurt him. It was the two out walk to Meacham in the second inning. The walk to Pagliarulo, the number eight hitter in the eighth inning. And they're going to the pen. Mark Clear will be brought in to pitch to Randolph, Mattingly, and Winfield. So Al Nipper goes seven and a third and goes out losing three to one. We'll be right back. Three things to notice in the standings. If the Yankees win, Toronto's lead will be cut to five. Toronto and the Yankees only a difference of four games in the loss column. And if Boston loses, they'll go back to the 500 mark for the first time since July 7th. Uh, that's really spinning your wheels. Two on, one out. The Red Sox infield is up. Randolph and Mattingly to face Mark Clear. Clear is one and two. An ERA of three. Four one. Bob Stanley is now down in the Red Sox bullpen. Rigetti is throwing in the Yankee pen. One and oh. Randolph has walked twice, grounded to third, hit back to the box. Ball two. Clear is out there with one thing in mind. He's got to get the strikeout and maybe pitch around Manning Lane and get the win field. But if he's got the bases loaded, one out, Manning Lane Winfield coming up, he's really going to be in a deep water. 2-0 to Willie Randolph. Foul ball upstairs off to the right, two and one. The Yankees scored three in the second. The Red Sox scored one in the third. And John McNamara has had ten men left on base. And any time John has to know he could easily have tied up the game and each time failed. Thanks to three big defensive plays by the Yankees. Two and one to Randolph. Clear coming a little bit by way of third base that time. That's what he's got to do. He's got to go for the strikeout. The Yankees acting it out to perfection to try to set up the thought of a possible squeeze play here with Randolph in the batter's box and possibly at third. Two and two. Mattingly on deck with first base open. His control, he's got to make it happen here. He can't be setting up any pitches. His pitch of decision right here, 2-2. Two, two. Got him. So the breaking ball takes care of Randolph. Big curveball. He sidearms him. Really, it set him up with the fastball right down the middle of the plate. You can see Randolph kind of reaching for it. There's no way they'll pitch to Manningly now. It'll be up to Winfield. Four, says Rich Getman as he holds up four fingers on his right hand. So Manningly will reach first base for the third time today. He singled in a run in the second, singled in the fourth. It's your pet play now in a key spot. That's right. This is, Joe and I have often talked about it. I think baseball is the only sport where you ask a man to go against all of his training in a particular instant, such as a pitcher. He is trained to throw strikes. Everything he is taught about this game is to get ahead of the hitter, throw strikes, get the ball over the plate with something on it. And this is one time now where you say, okay, don't throw a strike. And we can't think of any other sport where at any time you are asked to go against your training. And sometimes, and we certainly don't say it is statistically correct, but so many times following the intentional walk, it's tough to get back in the groove. We'll see. Here's Winfield. Grounded to short, tripled in a couple, and flied out twice. Three to one Yankees trying to open it up in the bottom of the eighth. And remember, Kansas City defeated Toronto 4-2. to two. 
Well, the Yankees, if they win, would be five back of the Blue Jays. Ball one. Squad third, Pagliarulo at second, Mattingly at first. Strike, throw down to Barrett. Oh, they almost had him. I tell you, it was close, but I don't like that play at all. I just don't like that play at all unless you're about 90% sure. That's one of those things you can throw it right into the center field. You can say, well, that's defensive thinking, and that's aggressive catching. It just may be. But I'm telling you, when you got the bases loaded, you better worry about that hitter. Trick plays very rarely gets you out of a jam. So Pagliarulo just did make it back. One and one to count to Winfield. Strike. Oh, what a good pitch. Oh. Whoa, sidearm breaking ball. It looked like it was in on the ribs, and it darted in over the strike zone. And it's not that easy to see now. As you can see, clear is in the sunlight, the batter is in the shade, and two breaking balls for strikes. One and two, the count to Dave Winfield. right back with another breaking ball and the count one and two in case you're wondering the Yankees have hit three grand slams this year Don Baylor has hit two and the on deck hitter Ken Griffey also has one the clear is thinking anything but slam except to slam the door on Dave Winfield Pasqua Pagliarulo and Mattingly out on the lines three one Yankees in the eighth fly ball into right field Evans comes over and they're out of the jam so the Yankees leave three and at the end of eight it's still a tough one the Yankees three Red Sox one you know when it comes to being a champion sizes and everything who knows better than Doug Flutie the main thing is you got to be tough like this small size Ford Ranger it packs plenty of V6 power up here. No other small V6 pickup beats it for power. And down here, there's independent front suspension. Real tough. OK, go long. And the Ranger's cab is high and wide. Hey, do that again, Doug. What do you want, another miracle? <laughs> It's the ninth inning here at Yankee Stadium. The Yankees trying to whittle Toronto's lead to five, and the Red Sox, who have frustrated themselves particularly in the sixth and seventh innings, have now run out of time. It'll be Steve Lyons, Marty Barrett, and Wade Boggs. Strike. And Fisher has not been cute with that pitch that he's been throwing up there. It's just been a good old country hard ball fastball. One ball, one strike. Lyons tried to bunt his way aboard. And remember, as we said, he has 10 bunts. And Mattingly fairly deep at first. Two and one. So he might try to drag one. He was the one who hit the line drive with runners at second and third in the sixth inning, and Mattingly went up the ladder to take a hit and two RBIs away. Otherwise, it would have tied up the game. High foul out of play, and the count two and two. Ryan Fisher trying to save this one for Ron Guidry, who went six and two third inning. Al Nipper went seven and a third. Mark Clear picked up for him. Line drive base hit and the Sox are still alive. The Red Sox have failed to get a man on base only in the eighth inning when they went out in order. The Red Sox lead the American League in perhaps the most unenviable department. Men left on base. Well, they've left 10 so far today, and here's Marty Barrett. Flied to left and struck out, doubled aboard on an error. One for four. Fouled away, Ooh. and that got a little bit of hassy. 
That got a lot of hassy. That fastball foul back. I was just watching the monitor. I could almost feel it here. It just comes straight back. Watch Hassey kind of reel back. Hmm. I mean, it hits him flush. No doubt about that one. Take a count. The first time you ever caught, I don't mean professionally, as a little kid, did you flinch? Certainly. You learn in a hurry, though, not to flinch. And put your head down. Never put your head down. Keep looking straight ahead. Oh, and one. Little fly ball to right field. Winfield is there. One out. Now you have Wade Boggs, the number one hitter in the league, followed by Dwight Evans. Three runs, eight hits, two errors for the Yankees. One run, nine hits, and one error for the Sox. Boggs robbed of a hit by Pasqua in the first inning. Single to left, flied to right, hit into a force play. One for four. Mattingly is behind the runner, not holding him. Right. He wants a little room. Pagliarulo deep and asking the bench if they want him on the line or not. Not quite. Line drive at short. Double play at first. There it is. Typical frustrating moment for the Boston Red Sox and an exhilarating moment for the Yankees. For the Red Sox, no matter what they rolled, it came up snake eyes. And the Yankees win three to one. We'll be right back after this. But first, we want to update you on baseball this afternoon. In the game you've been watching, of course, the Yankees hung on to beat Boston to win for the 10th time in their last 11 games. That means that Billy Martin's crew is now five games behind Toronto because the Blue Jays today were beaten by Kansas City. A beautiful day in Toronto. And in spite of a very nice endorsement, the Blue Jays have struggled a little bit of late. The Royals got the scoring started in the first, a manufactured run after Willie Wilson singled, stole second, and went to third on a wild pitch. He scored here on this sacrifice fly by George Brett. The score was tied at one in the seventh when the Blue Jays went ahead. George Bell with an RBI single through the infield to left. Lewis Thornton on as a pinch runner scores the go-ahead run 2-1 Toronto. But back came Kansas City with three runs in the eighth. Two here on this bloop single by Lonnie Smith. A close play at the plate. Willie Wilson slides, but Gary Allison can't hang on to the ball. And the Royals win it 4-2. Dan Quisenberry gets his 28th save. Also today, the, in Milwaukee, the White Sox got out quickly. They lead the Brewers now at County Stadium by a score of 10 to 5. The White Sox scored early. They had a 4-1 lead in the second, as you see a little bit of celebration at County Stadium, when Greg Walker hit a double down the left field line. Take that back. It's through the infield, and Brian Little will score 10 to 5 White Sox. Uh, and in a game already completed, Burt Blylevin, if you can come back to us now, Burt, Burt Blylevin, Shut out Seattle. The Mariners lose two to nothing. Bly Levin with his 18th complete game. That should bring you up to date. Once again, in a few moments, we'll be sending you just outside Atlanta for the third round of ladies golf. We want to send you now back across the Harlem River to Yankee Stadium and Vin and Joe. Gentlemen. The Yankees beat a thoroughly frustrated Red Sox 3-1. to one. This week's NBC Light Beer from Miller player of the game is Yankee first baseman Don Mattingly. Light Beer from Miller is happy to present a check for $1,000 in the name of Don Mattingly to help fight multiple sclerosis. He made the big defensive play on the line drive in the sixth inning. If that goes by off the bat of Steve Lyons, two runs are in and who knows. But for the Red Sox, Joe, that's been the kind of a day it was all day. And just stand with Mattingly he got the big base hit after the base on balls that third inning when the Yankees scored three there were two quick outs Meacham draws the base on balls he's the ninth place hitter and you wonder about that and then Randolph he gets a base on balls Mattingly gets jammed with the pitch loops it in the center field inning is still alive and then Winfield sets off the big bomb with the triple 
it's one of those games you talk about three to one you say if we could only got a hit here a hit in the right spot but what it amounted to was the base on balls to meet him and Randolph which you have to put in the category of bad pitching and it really came home to haunt the Red Sox because they had chances they had base runners on as the expression goes the Yankees pitchers didn't know if they were working with two infields today because there were base runners on all day but the final score Yankees three to one over the Red Sox and wouldn't you know the last out would be a line drive a bullet off the bat of Wade Boggs to double up Steve Lyons at first and the Red Sox wind up leaving 10 Brian Fisher gets a big save for Ron Guidry who wins his 16th and the Yankees now trail Toronto by five having beaten the Red Sox six straight and have won five in a row here at Yankee Stadium. The Major League Baseball game of the week has been brought to you by light beer from Miller. Everything you've always wanted in a beer and less by Napa. Do it right so your car will run Napa brand new by Mutual of Omaha people you can count on and by Ford who invites you to drive the new Ford Escort. Have you driven a Ford lately? The executive producer of NBC Sports is Michael Weissman. The coordinating producer for NBC Baseball, Harry Coyle. The telecast of today's Game of the Week. Produced by John J. Filippelli. Happy anniversary. Directed by Harry Coyle. Free game produced by Dave Hoffman. Technical director, Lenny Stucker. Don't forget to stay tuned for exciting golf action coming up next as NBC Sports presents the Nestle's World Championship of Women's Golf. And then, don't forget our Game of the Week coverage continues next week as the California Angels, trying to stead of the Kansas City Royals, host the Detroit Tigers, or Minnesota will visit the Boston Red Sox. And naturally, that all will be on NBC Sports. A footnote, as the Yankees chase Toronto, they have seven games left with the Blue Jays, and the final weekend of the year here, October 4th, 5th, and 6th, it'll be the Yankees and Toronto. And this one might go very much down to the wire indeed. This was the second game of a four-game series. The Yankees play the Red Sox tomorrow, and they'll close up shop on Monday. Talking about closing up shop, for Joe Garagiola, Vin Scully, wishing you a very pleasant good afternoon from Yankee Stadium in New York. <laughs>